to art fifth graders. Today, we're just going to shortly go over your graffiti project. So let me go ahead and pull up our presentation. So today we're gonna to talk about um, directions for one, and then we're also gonna talk about the expectations for this project so you know what you need to do in order to get the best grade possible. So um, for this project, we are going to be writing our own names in a graffiti style of your choice. So that means you can choose from, you can do it in old school, bubble or wild style, but it needs to be at least one of those three. Um, you also need to complete this with color as well. You can use your, you can use crowns, markers, color pencils, um, whatever, whatever colored material supplies you have, whether that's pens, um, paint markers, whatever one that you have available to you. Uh, I would say that using colored pencils is probably the easiest material to use for this project, but you're more than welcome to use whatever you have. So let's go on to talk about um, the criteria and also the examples. Um, so here you can see a lot of student examples of what this project looks like um, and what it, the expectations are for it. So um, if you see in the background of each of these projects, there's uh, a, a pattern. You don't need to worry about that because we're actually going to um, kind of create our own for the next project. So just skip that. You just need to focus on the name part. Uh, so for the first thing you need to think about for this project is your name. You can do your full name, um, or if you have a nickname, um, you can do a nickname. If your name is really, really long, um, you can shorten it by doing a nickname, or you can um, do your full length name if you'd like to, or you can uh, send me a message and say, hey, can I do this name instead? because mine is really, really long, and that's totally fine. We can discuss it. I'm okay with that. Um, but when you do your name and you've chosen your nickname or your real name, uh, again, you need to choose to either do old school style, wild style, or bubble. Um, if you go back to our um, try it out section where we tried the different styles out, um, you'll have a reference for each. There will also be a demonstration on its learning of uh, me actually showing you guys how to do the, each of the styles and some um, tips and tricks on how to do them. Um, so you can always refer back to that. Um, the second thing, so after you've picked your name and you've done your style, you're gonna draw it in pencil because we always wanna do with pencil so that way if we make a mistake or something, we can easily erase it. Once you have done it in pencil, um, I would suggest outlining with a dark marker. So um, if you have a black Sharpie, that'd be great. If you don't, um, outline it with maybe a dark pen, um, a dark crown, whatever you have, a dark color to outline your letters. And you can see that um, each of these letters, all of the names are outlined, okay? Um, the second most important thing to do is that one to go in with color. So after you've done your name, drawn it in pencil, then outlined it with a dark color, you're going to then go in and add your colors on the inside of your letters. So you need to have at least two different colors per letter. So Debbie up here did a great job. She had blue and green, um, and she even faded it from dark blue to light blue to green to light green. Um, you don't have to have that many, you just have to have two. And she's just consistently done the blue green throughout the name. Uh, same with Matt, he did three colors um, and it's throughout the name, but each letter has all three of those colors. Um, let's see if someone did different ones. Uh, Chanti, Chanti did a really good job. She also did blue and then it went to purple and pink as well. So at least two colors per letter. If you wanted to do two different colors in each letter, so if this is blue, purple, pink and green, yellow, like you can do that, that's totally fine, but at least have two colors. So those are the expectations uh, for this project. Again, don't worry about having a pattern background. We will work on that for a later project. 
Okay, so we're going to talk briefly about the rubric so that you guys know how to get the best grade possible. You know what my expectations are, um, and that way you don't say, Mrs. Gill, I didn't know that I needed to do that in order to get a good grade. So we're going to talk about the rubric, what each of the things mean, and then we'll actually look at the rubric and a A-plus project side by side so you guys can see where the criteria is being met. So. Um, you're going to be graded on creativity, and basically what I'm looking for creati creativity is A, that you are trying. So I need to see that, you know, I, I can, Mrs. Gill's pretty good at telling if we've tried or not. Um, so creativity means taking risks and experimenting. You know, not all of us have done graffiti before, and that's okay. That's why we're learning to do it, and that's why we're doing a project where we get comfortable with it. And um, so I want to see you guys um, just being creative and actually trying it out. So trying your best. Um, and then obviously doing one of the three styles shows me that you understand with evidence and research Basically, just showing me that you've done either bu bubble, old school, or wild style will show me that you are following directions and you are um, choosing one of those creative outlets. Technique and craftsmanship is the next thing, and this is really important. Um, don't rush yourself. Take your time. Um, so when you are coloring in your letters, if I see like it's really scribbly and it's not really colored in well, you've got a lot of white marks where it's not colored in, that shows me that you're not taking your time and you're not having good craftsmanship. So take your time, focus. Um, you are also going to be um, making sure that you use two colors. That's another good showing of craftsmanship and technique and following directions. So again, just taking your time when you're coloring it in, color in the lines. Um, don't scribble. Make sure you're filling the whole thing in. Uh, conceptual. So that's just making sure you guys understand what this project is, what it's about. And you show me that by picking a style that we've talked about. It's one of the three styles that we've mentioned. And then choosing two colors per letter. So that's just showing me that you understand what the directions are and you're actually doing them. And then formal qualities. You almost will always get a five out of this. Um, it's pretty easy to meet. That just means that um, you have a nice composition and composition is how things are laid out. And so when we talked about graffiti, remember how we talked about the letters are really close together. Um, if we go back, so let's go back for a second. So if we go back, we can see that all of these letters are really close together, not super spaced out right. That makes it very visually pleasing visually pleasing to look at. Um, so that is an example of a uh, nice composition, is having your letters close together or even overlapping. So think about that when you are making your artwork. So this piece is a very, is an A plus paper. So if you're trying to look at something and, and say, oh, this is A plus, um, this is it. So they have um, showed me that they are risk takers because they have done one of the styles that I asked them to do and they gave it their best shot. Um, they even added a star in there, so that's kind of creativity. Um, I wouldn't have thought to do a star, so that's kind of showing a little bit of their personality. Technique and craftsmanship. So again, when I see that Caitlin's colored it in, I don't really see white spots where she's missed it because she was scribbling too fast. Um, so she does a nice job of taking her time. Her lines are nice and neat, so they're not really weave, they're not really squiggly, nice, neat lines. It's good craftsmanship. Uh, conceptual, so she chose wild style. And that's just showing me that she understands that she had to do one of the three styles that we talked about. Um, and then she also did, th at, she did three colors. So you can do two, at least two or more. So she did three colors in her name. And so I can see that she understood what we were talking about. And the very last thing, formal qualities. So her letters are, some are overlapping or they're like right next to each other. So she's showing me that she can create a good composition because she's having her letters be close together like graffiti style is supposed to be. Um, again, don't worry about the background, guys. This actually 
this part that's the purple is the background and it was just put onto a separate piece of paper. So this is an A-plus project. So if you are looking and trying to figure out what is an A-plus project so you know what to aim for, you can look at this. You have the rubric and you have the other examples. And again, you guys are more than welcome to message me on It's Learning. There's a little message app that you can ask me questions about the assignments. Feel free to reach out. I am happy to answer all your questions. Good luck, guys, and I'm excited to see what you make.